Following on from the season premiere last week, the second episode of The Sympathizer is here, and this episode was the perfect way to progress on from the introduction to the show. Set two months after the fall of Saigon, we saw the captain having to deal with an unhinged general who believed there was a spy amongst him. Plus, his good friend Bond was struggling with grief, but it would transpire that both of these problems could be resolved with the same solution. So with that, let's jump into this episode and break down all that there was to take away from it. Here is The Sympathizer Episode 2, Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. So the episode opened up with it reminding us that the captain was being detained in a prison in the present day and was being forced to relay all of the information about the undercover operation that he was doing as a spy for the North. With him being tasked with going back to the States during the fall of Saigon to keep watch over the general so that he could report back if there was any chance that the general was going to be looking to devise a plan on striking back, that was his sole purpose. But considering he's being held inside of a cell, it seems like somewhere along the road of the story that he's going to be telling us, something's gonna go very wrong and maybe that love of America that he has that man mentioned could potentially change him and his loyalties. The opening section of this episode was something which was just so well constructed. We were back on the airfield on the night that Bond lost his wife and newborn baby as himself and the captain were running to make it onto the plane which was heading for America. During this scene, it was intercut with the captain driving his car down a highway, almost implying like what had happened was a distant memory. Yet in the back seat of the car, riddled with trauma and filled with mourning was Bon, who still wasn't over the death of his family that he was only just starting a life with. The mood, tone, and feel of these completely contrasting shots was something which was unavoidable to see when watching. The blood that was dripping from Bon's wife as he was doing his best to carry her was such a haunting and harrowing shot. And then in the distance, with the plane door closing on the land that they considered home which was essentially up in flames, then matched with the convertible roof folding open when they arrived at the vast open landscape of an American desert, it felt like it should have represented freedom because of the safety that they had, and it was almost like a new chapter that they'd be able to start in their lives, but it really didn't feel like that at all. Most of these people didn't want to be there because they were leaving their homes, the places where they wanted to stay. And this new land and culture was something that they just weren't ready for. So I thought the opening section in this episode was one that really did land with impact and set the overall tone and mood for the remainder of the episode. Shortly after this, the foundations for the story of the episode were laid down quite quickly. The general believed that there was a spy amongst the people that were on the plane with him. He felt like this because many of the people turned on him when they were at Fort Chafe in Arkansas, and he felt as though he was being undermined and people were conspiring against him. He also thought that this was the case later on in the episode because there was graffiti on the side of the liquor store that he opened which had Butcher on the wall, something which was referring to the time that the general killed a murderer in the street. You could tell that the captain wasn't too concerned to start with, but as time went on and the ante increased with the general believing that there genuinely was a spy, it got to the point where he threw Major Juan under the bus and accused him of being the spy. The moment that we were first introduced to the character outside of the general's house when he handed that snack to the general's wife and mentioned that he was in the secret police, it always felt like something bad was going to be going his way and that he'd most likely end up being accused of being the person that was the spy. With the General and Claude believing that it could well be the Major due to him being able to access the Vietnamese snacks that were unavailable in the US, the General was pressing for the Captain to kill him and to deal with him so the problem would go away. There was actually a tense moment where it was said that the Captain's name came up when speaking to people about who they thought the spy could be. There was just laughter and uneasiness, but what I feel that did show us is that there is a weakness to the Captain's game. Whilst he is undercover right now, he's not convincing everyone. Let's remember as well, when he was with the professor and met Sophia at the dinner that he threw, she said how she could see through exactly what he was doing and being the good student that the professor wanted him to be. That felt like a line that had a lot more importance than what it implied at the time, so I think there will definitely come a time where suspicions will be raised about him even more. With Bond's grief being the underpinning drone of the episode, it reached its climax in the conclusion where there was an extremely emotional scene where we saw that he was a lost individual. He wasn't showering, wasn't eating, and was just merely existing. We saw him holding his fist to his head because he was so hurt, and it cut to a scene where his wife and child were having their coffin closed shut, and to the beat of the hammering of the nails, he was hitting himself in the head. Both Bon and the captain looked emotional, and you could really feel the pain that was present amongst them. 
Whilst it did genuinely seem as though the captain was mourning Bond's wife and baby, Bond's mental state was something that he was looking to take advantage of. In the closing moments, the captain revealed to Bond that the Major was perceived to be a spy, and like in the coded letters that he would send to man, he asked Bond if he should kill him. As soon as the spy was mentioned, Bond's whole demeanor changed. He said the line, Now that I can help you with. This showed the deep-rooted hate that Bond had for the people that were siding with the North, the people that he felt were responsible for the death of his wife and baby. This was Bond's chance to release all of that pent-up anger and rage inside of him over what happened to his family. Trouble is about to arrive at the Major's door, but I think that trouble won't stop when the Captain and Bond leave. That will be something that will follow them for sure. The Captain probably couldn't do it on his own, as we saw him writing to Man, asking if he should do it. So the fact that he's using Bond's grief, it says a lot about the Captain as a person. Has the Captain killed before? Well, that's something that we don't actually know for certain either. When the captain was being interviewed, there was a really interesting set of questions and statements that were made. The interviewer asked if he felt the support of the activists in America, and he also said that the Americans were on the side of the Vietnamese people, to which the captain responded by saying which ones, the North or South, and the interviewer then responded and said, all of them. The captain followed up by saying, I guess we all look the same after all, right? This was a moment where it did kind of start to show a different perspective of the war, and the naivety and almost blasé approach from the interviewer was an interesting focus. But during this interview, the bold question of have you ever killed anyone was asked to the captain, and then the interviewer's head turned into an egg, where we were then met with a scene of what looked like a patient or prisoner eating an egg. This part of the story wasn't resolved at that moment, so it's hard to say what went on there. But it very much seems like the captain could have some blood on his hands. Well, not his bare hands, as he said. This episode also showed the complete disregard and no-filtered approach when it came to racist remarks, behaviors, and environments back in the 70s. For example, when the captain was in the store, there were two rude, judging store clerks. Professor Hammer was very inappropriate in the way that he acted and the culture that he seemed to want to exploit for his own benefit. And the fact that he referred to the captain as a half-breed and made him list his oriental and occidental qualities in front of an audience at his dinner party like it was some kind of entertainment. So the show did lean into that in this episode and provided another reason why people that had fled their country may have found it difficult to feel like they could have built a new home when their environment was like that. My review of the episode. I thought this was a good episode of the show. From a stylistic point of view, it's just absolutely gorgeous. The transitions that are used, the deliberate use of certain colors, the music choices, the repeat motifs that are present when scenes from the past come up, and the performances that the cast deliver. It all just complements each other so well and feels very Park Chan-wook. The story that this show offers is one that balances insightfulness with entertainment too. It's got good pacing to it, which allows the show to feel like it has natural rhythm, despite taking us through different time periods and seeing things in the past and present. The three characters that are stealing the show for me at the moment are the Captain, the General, and Bon. All of the performances are just so strong, and you really buy into the convincing performances and characters that they're delivering. I also think Downey Jr. is doing a great job as well. His role of the Professor was one that was so different to Claude. But for me, the thing that's keeping this show engaging is the gripping nature of it and the conflict that you can see that's inside of the Captain's mind. I genuinely don't know where the show's going to go and what could possibly happen to land him in the cell in the present day, but it's one that I am intrigued to see. So, there you have it, the Sympathizer Episode 2 ending explained. As always, thanks for tuning into the video and I'll see you in the next one.